so I've literally just ridden the Scram for the first time. I've done 15 miles on it, probably the hardest 15 miles of a motorcycle's life. Probably not the best way of running in a new motorcycle. Exactly as I imagined, dartier on the road and actually still pretty good off-road. Easy. Hello there, Nathan Millward from Dorothy's Speed Shop just down here in North Devon. I've uh, just taken delivery of the new Scram 411, it's a new bike for 2022. I'm very interested in this bike and so are a lot of other people just by the reaction it's got when people have seen it in the, in the Speed Shop. But, I mean, fundamentally, it's a Himalayan. All they've really done is change the front wheel size from a 21 to a 19. That shouldn't make a huge difference, but if there's one thing I've learned from Royal Enfield, they've got a good knack of making one bike into t in two ways. I think for me, what I was keen to know and to find out was how it handled the trails, because fundamentally, the Himalayan is a good little trail bike. I mean, if the question is, can the Scram scram? Yes, it scrams in exactly the same way as the Himalayan scrams. I think it's it's just as capable on the dirt. Again, you're gonna lose a little bit of traction when it's sloppy mud, but for 90% of the terrain, for 95% of the off-road terrain that riders are gonna ride it on, I don't think you're gonna notice a difference. It's got exactly the same standing position, which is always what has made the Himalayan so good. It's a comfortable, uh, empowering standing position, which you don't get with a lot of bikes. I was keen to find out if the reduction to a 19 inch front wheel would reduce that, would, would sort of remove that element out of it. And I think pretty much it doesn't. What you find on the open flowing trails that have got a bit of mud on them, that broader front tyre, which is 100 now rather than a 90, it does want to move around a little bit more. Uh, certainly when you're pressing on, certainly when you hit a muddy camber, you can just feel that wheel start to push a little bit. On the big 2190 profile tyre, it sent that little bit more planted. I mean, it's only ounces of difference, but not a huge amount. What I found on the more technical goat track trail that I attempted was there really was not much difference at all, if any. Uh, the bike still managed to bounce on and off the rocks and was very uh, predictable, docile. Without having the center stand, which is removed on the scram, you don't get as much bottoming out. Uh, in a way, not having a center stand is a bad thing because then if you get a puncture or you want to do some running repairs, it's not good not having a center stand. It's far easier to have one. The upshot is that on the rockier trails, there's less to clatter on the ground. Uh, I think fundamentally I'd rather have a centre stand and deal with any bottoming out, but it was, it was interesting to note that there was less clattering from the bottom and the centre stand clearly does foul rocks uh, on, the, um, on the Himalayan. Still got those inherent traits of the engine being very chuggable. You know, going up that steep first gear climb, there was no clutch slip needed. It just, but it just comes, picks up nicely off the bottom. Uh, it's difficult to stall it. You've really got to bring the speed almost to a standstill to stall it, uh, compared to say a 390 KTM Adventure or a GS310, where you'd have to pump the clutch a little bit to get it up there without stalling. Uh, one thing with the Scram, they've removed the uh, option to, to turn the ABS off on the back wheel, which you could do on the Himalayan. For me, I don't think that's particularly a huge issue, you know, unless you're really riding aggressively. But really, if you're riding to a point where ABS is cutting in, you're probably riding beyond the bike's uh, ability. So I was able to ride this bike in all conditions with ABS, no problem. The sad thing with the Euro 5 Himalayan and Scram is that when you remove the ABS fuse, which you used to be able to on the Euro 4, now because there's a wheel speed sensor in the rear wheel, it, yeah, it basically cuts out your, uh, your miles per hour indicator. So you used to be able to remove the fuse and ride the bike as normal, just without the ABS at all. Now when you remove the fuse, you don't get any speedo. So that's a bit of a shame that you can't do that. So for me, leave the fuse in and just ride it as it was intended. To look at any other differences you might spot with the Scram to the Himalayan, uh, obviously they've got new clocks, new instrument clusters on the Scram. 
They don't show a rev counter, which I think is a good thing to have a rev counter. I quite like a rev counter. So it's sad that that's missing. Also, the clocks are mounted to the steering. So when you turn, so do the clocks. On the Himalayan, they're mounted to, to the frame. So the clocks don't turn. I, I quite like it. It gives the bike a very different feel to the Himalayan, even though it is, as I said, the same bike. It just feels, gives a presence of being uh, a different style, different type of bike. One other thing I did notice with this is there's a redesign on this side panel. Uh, it doesn't look any different in how much it flares, but it doesn't feel as though it bows your legs out quite as much as it does on the Himalayan. So that's something I, I do quite like. Uh, equally, the bench seat. It's nice to have that bench seat. I think it looks better. It also feels better. It gives you a little bit more movement front and back when you sat down. Uh, in terms of comfort, I obviously can't tell. I've only done 15 miles. Uh, how it lasts on a, you know, a 600 mile day, 400 mile day, uh, that will be the crucial point. All in all though, you know, I'm impressed with the Scram. I think it's a good product. I think it's a good way for Royal Enfield to extend the, the appeal of, of, the, of the Himalayan. Uh, I think the image is very different. I think the audience for it is gonna be very different. I think the customer base is gonna be very different, but fundamentally it's the same bike. Uh, and so it's down to you what suits you best. For me, for traveling, I'm gonna miss the rear rack. I'm gonna miss these side uh, tank frames. I'm gonna miss the center stand. I'm gonna miss the screen. So really, for, from a functional point of view, the Himalayan is still the better bike. With the Scram, you're paying the same amount and getting a lot less for your money. It's a very good marketing exercise. It's very clever. I think it'll sell well. I think people will like it. Is it enough to swap your Himalayan for one? Only, only if you like the aesthetics more. First impressions of the Scram, it does exactly what I expected it to do. Be a slightly more engaging road ride, but not really hamper its ability off-road. And if you want to come and ride this back to back with the other bikes, just give us a shout, dorothyspeedshop.com. All right, cheers.